What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me. Today, I'm going to be talking about Psalm 91, verse 5. And it reads like this. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. It says, Thou shalt not be afraid. The NIV says, You will not be afraid. You will not fear. So God does not give suggestions. God gives commands. And those commandments are for our benefit. Those commandments benefit us. So here he's saying, thou shall not fear. When you are in the secret place in the presence of God, thou shall not fear. Is that to say that because you're in the presence of God, fear will not come upon you? No, but what that is saying that you will not walk in fear. You will not live in fear when you're in the presence of God because you have an understanding of who God is and you will not fear. God is greater than fear. The word of God says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We may have moments of fear where fear tries to grip us so we may get a little afraid. But as a believer, the word of God says that we should not be operating. We should not be living. We should not be walking in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if you have one, it is of the devil. And God has given you power. He has given you authority over that fear through him. Okay? So you should not fear of the terror by night. What is terror? Terror is a fear that disables your strength or ability to function whether spiritual or physical. If you get afraid naturally, if you see something that you're afraid of, you are demobilized. Your strength and your ability to function has been disabled to where you no longer want to move forward. If you run into a dog growling and drooling at the mouth, you will be afraid to go forward because that dog is in the way. That fear has gripped you and it has demobilized you and it has took away your strength and your ability to function and move forward. We're here, we're talking about a spiritual fear, terror that comes that the enemy wants to use to demobilize you spiritually, to keep you from moving forward, to keep you from believing and trusting in God and in God alone. He wants to use his weapons and his tactics of terror to put fear in your heart, to make you demobilized so that you would not function the way God wants you to function for the greatness of the, of the Lord. It says here, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. It says by night, the terror that comes by night. Night describes the vulnerability of being in darkness. Satan wants us in darkness and darkness resembles death. But the word of God says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, it says, O death, where is thy sting? Verse 56 goes on to say that the sting of sin, the sting of death is sin. But God has already overcome sin. He's already beat sin. So sin has no more power over you. Death has no more power over you. The sting of death is gone. So darkness has no power over you. You understand? Terror, the, the, Satan wants to keep you in terror of the night. Night shall not have dominion over you. The night, the darkness shall not have victory over you because Jesus has already achieved victory over it and you belong to him. So you also have victory. So when we remain in the secret place, God wants us to understand that we should not fear. We should not fear of the terror that comes at night, that comes in the darkness, but we should have faith in God. It also says the arrows that flies by day. An arrow comes to divide. An arrow divides you from something. Okay? So the arrow that flies by day introduces the context of a battle or the destruction that comes during the invasion. An arrow is something that pierces or wounds spiritually, physically, or mentally. Okay, so that arrow is coming to divide your soul. That arrow is coming to destroy you. These are demonic arrows. And let me give you some of the demonic arrows that Satan tries to throw at us. 
He throws arrows of death, arrows of affliction, arrows of confusion and division, arrows of character disorder, arrows that devour, arrows of generational strongholds and curses, and arrows of destiny manipulation. Now I'm gonna do another video about the arrows of the devil that he throws at us and how we can overcome them. But for the purpose of this video, I'm telling you that the arrows that are coming at you that fly by day should not affect you, should not intimidate you. When you are in the secret place of the Most High God, when you remain in the promise of God, when you remain in the presence of God, these arrows, we should not be afraid of these arrows. And and if I may add, the Bible also says in Luke 10, 19, behold, I give you power to tread over scorpions, over serpents, and over all the power of the enemy. So these arrows that are flying by day, this terror that is coming at night, God has already given you a Authority, the right to authority means the right to exercise power. God has given you authority to exercise the power that He has given you through Him to overcome the de devil, to overcome the devil, to overcome these arrows that fly by day, to overcome the terror, the, the, to overcome the terror in the night. Do not let Satan intimidate you because he is bluffing. He's a big bluff. Because he has no victory over you when you have faith and hope and trust in God. And when you remain in the secret place, in the presence of God. Also, also, I want you to understand that God also throws arrows. But they're not evil arrows. They're arrows of love. Arrows of faith. Arrows of hope. God will send arrows to, to pierce your heart, to pierce through the heart, heartedness that does not want to serve him, that does not want to spend time with him. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, he will send arrows to divide, to put asunder those things that are in your heart that is keeping you from serving God, that is keeping you from getting into his presence. The arrows of God will divide you from all those evil things that are in your heart. Some of us as believers are walking around with demonic arrows in our back. These arrows that I just mentioned, arrows of death, affliction, confusion and division, character disorder, the, the devourer, generational curses, strongholds, and destiny manipulation. Some of us as believers are walking around right now with arrows in our backs. But God has given us authority over that. You can pray in the name of Jesus every arrow that the enemy has sent to me. I command it to return the sender. I send the blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for removing every arrow out of my back that the enemy has sent to me. We have to pray these kinds of prayers because sometimes the things that are going on in our life, the discord, the, the manipulation, um, the struggle and, and moving ahead and moving into things of God, the struggle in our health and we can't get away from it. It's because there has been arrows that the enemy has shot at us and we have to pray against those arrows by faith that the Lord will remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. But when we remain in the presence of God, when we remain in the secret place, we have nothing to fear. Until next time, be blessed.